Hello guys, today we're going to discuss the method of preparation of purified water which is then used uh, as a solvent. So uh, pure first uh, let us discuss about purified water. So basically purified water is that water uh, which on evaporation uh, contains the minimum amount of 0.001% of residue that means uh, in 100 ml of water of our purified water the residue or the solids should be uh, one milligram um, but the drinking water that we use has one percent residue so it is not um, classified uh, it, it is not purified water so that's why we need to um, do certain um, processes or methods to make the water purified so, um, because uh, we need to use them in pharmaceutical preparations and we cannot use the drinking water or river water or tap water or any type of water, we need to have purified water, which we defined above. So, um, and drinking water and tapping water, it is used for other extraction and washing of, of apparatus in uh, pharmaceutical labs, but it is not used in pharmaceutical preparations. So, to make the water purified, of course, we do not get purified water. We have to make it. So that is done through three processes. That is distillation, um, ion exchange method, and reverse osmosis. So you can remember it like RID or reverse osmosis, I, I, ion exchange method, and D, distillation. So the first one we have is distillation. So in this, uh, in this flask here, we uh, water is present so first we heat the water the water boils and the vapors rise the vapors rise to the condenser where the water vapors are then cooled to a lower uh, lower temperature and they condense and then they're collected and stored uh, while the uh, contaminated uh, remain in the other vessels so we get here through this into this the purified water through the condenser And the remaining uh, 10 to 20 percent of the sample, we keep it in the still, and we do not uh, distillate it or evaporate it because uh, it contains impurities or volatile components. So 10 to 25 percent of it, we do not uh, evaporate, boil it, and condense it and get it into the final sample. Um, we do not do that. And also. Um, one disadvantage of this process is that it's uh, costly because the stills capacity, uh, their range is 0 0.5 to 100 and the distillate in them is distillate per hour which is used on the art scale. So this is distillation uh, used to purify water. Next we have is ion exchange method. In ion exchange method, the equipment uh, it passes through uh, the water in this process. We pass the water through a column of cation and anion exchanger, which consists of water in soluble synthetic polymerized uh, phenolic, carboxylic, amino, or sulfonated raisins, and which are of high molecular weight. And these are basically cationic or anionic raisins. So the cationic raisins, uh, which are also known as uh, uh, acid exchangers, they will permit the exchange of cations in the solution with hydrogen ion from the raisin. So the formula is that H raisin plus uh, M plus plus Xi H2O. So uh, X M raisin, M is the impurity. So um, it gets attached with the raisins and the H2O is purified and uh, yeah, hydrogen ion is released. So that is why they are cation or acid exchanger. And the next one is ionic. So the ion or base exchanger resin, they permit the removal of anion. So in this we have resin, for example, uh, phenolic resin or amino resin. And uh, we have uh, the impurity, hydrogen ion and water. So the uh, impurity uh, gets attached HX with the resin and water is removed in purified form. And as you can see in the figure, the green is the... Um, exchange material and here it is made of iron and then we pass it through the um, through this uh, blue water and and the black and the blues these are the impurities or the anions or so the, um, the green it attracts uh, and the first one it attracts the blue so ionic and the second one it attracts the red so cationic so basically that's how cationic and ionic uh, exchanger work and uh, 
this is the most uh, uh, commonly used and a well defined successful method of uh, getting uh, purified water another another method that we have is uh, reverse osmosis and uh, it is basically the reversal of the normal osmosis osmosis is when water moves from high concentration to low concentration but in this process uh, we move the water from low concentration to high concentration and and the impurities are left on the side so in this um, basically the movement of water molecules from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration through filters or semi permeable membrane this is also known as cross uh, cross flow membrane so how do we cause reverse osmosis or reverse osmotic pressure it is basically by applying a mechanical pressure or pump and we basically pump uh, the water through a filter from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration so as you can see in the figure so we have a u tube a u tube so we have saline solution which we make it which we need to make it into purified water so we at the other side we have pure water already made and between them the yellow is semi permeable membrane so in the figure 2 we have so in the figure 2 we apply the pressure and uh, osmotic pressure so this is osmosis basically where the water will move from high concentration to low concentration and the reverse osmosis uh, this is the process which we use this one in this basically um we apply pressure this yellow thing and uh, we apply the pressure to it and basically the water moves from the pure the water in the saline solution moves from it to the pure water on this side so because of this applied the water moves here so this is reverse osmosis the process we use to pu uh, obtain purified water so yeah so um this uh, reverse osmosis is modern and best method of making purified water and uh, with this method we can remove particles of size 0.01 micrometer and even smaller and it also removes all kind of impurities and also germs pyrogens bacteria organic molecules and 90 to 99% of the anions ions So we're also going to discuss uh, purified water here, simple water. So as we discussed, the simple water it contains uh, impurities such as dissolved in organic salt, sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, iron, chloride, sulfates, bicarbonates. These are all the dissolved and undissolved organic uh, matter. It also contains small amount of uh, microorganisms, protozoa, bacteria, and some fungi. So um the water that is usually found it contains 0.1 of the solids and uh, yeah and it is acceptable for drinking because it's clear colorless and odorless neutral and can be slightly acidic or uh, alkaline but mostly neutral and yeah so that's why we do not use the normal water and uh, so uh, the water for uh, pharmaceutical preparations uh, it is basically we uh, purify the ordinary water into this and uh, why we do not use the normal one because it causes chemical incompatibilities of the solids and medicinal agents such as precipitation discoloration or efferents and um, it can also uh, hinder in the efficacy of the dosage form So the definition of basically purified water (USP) is when it's evaporated, it uh, does not yield more than zero point zero one percent of the residue. So yeah, so its uses include that um, it is uh, mainly used in pharmaceutical preparation, especially in preparation of aqueous dosage forms in which we need uh, water. And so mostly we use it as water for injection or bactericidal water, or sterile water for injections, um, and uh, It is also used when we need large volumes of water to clean the pharmaceutical machinery or equipment.
So the methods of preparation I will discuss are these three. So I'm just going to tell a little more extra detail of this. Now in this I have said before that you have to re, uh, do the remaining uh, distillate 10 to 20 percent. You have to discard it but it's actually the first 10 to 20 percent you have to discard it because um, it contains microorganisms, impurities and residues. And also the last 10 percent also should be discarded and, um, and distillation should be stopped because it will result in the decomposition of the remaining solid impurities and they would maybe distill and contaminate the previously previously collected portion so you should not do the last one also and the first one 10 to 20 percent is discarded because it contains volatile substances which can be uh, the volatile substances they can be condensed and distillated and so on now and, and distillation is also carried in um, um, stills of various size and styles and they have capacity 0.5 to 100 gallons and they can do they can distillate uh, for, for over uh, 0.5 to 100 gallons and so yeah so commercially or industry the distillate that is used is this that in this you have uh, water in this uh, big uh, vessel or container and then basically you add the contaminated water okay and uh, you also provide steam and because of that steam the uh, you put contaminated water through this uh, coil and steam you provide so the contamination uh, products remain in this condensing coil so the impurities remain there also the water condenses and the condensed water then uh, goes into this um, this vessel and we get purified water which then moves to the tank so this is purified water and the contaminated water is through here and this we provide heat and this is water condenses into this so in ion exchange method um, um, it is a better alternative to distillation because um, because uh, we do not heat, need heat for it and it's not costly and we do not need maintenance of it simple it requires a simple equipment and uh, yeah it is easy to operate uh, minimal uh, maintenance and more mobile facilities and uh, most pharmacies and laboratories use the water that is obtained through this because they need large volumes of it and so yeah and in this basically as we discussed before uh, we pass it through the cationic or ionic exchanger which are basically the insoluble synthetic polymerized resins of high molecular weight and as we discussed the cations they exchange with the hydrogen ions or acid exchanger ions the base exchange and uh, these are the process so reverse osmosis in industry it is also known as a cross flow and in this basically we uh, pass pressurized uh, stream of water and through the and uh, through a filter membrane and then depending on the filter membrane pore size we can remove the impurities of that side and basically the water under pressure moves through the filter membrane and the impurities remain on one side and the other it remains through the other so this is also known as cross flow and uh, since it's basically reverse of osmosis that is uh, in this reverse osmosis water flows from high to low but in osmosis it is from low to high so yeah so depending upon the pore size the filter membrane they can remove uh, particles of sizes 0.1 to 2 micrometer that is of bacteria ultra filtration they can do also if the pore size is 0.01 to 0.1 micrometer for example virus nano filtration to remove the organic compounds and reverse osmosis is basically um, it basically contains size of 0.001 micrometer and uh, it removes basically 90 to 99 percent of the uh, ions viruses bacteria pyrogens organic molecules and so on now the types of water um, we have discussed uh, basically um, water in general or purified water now um, water in pharmaceutical preparation is used as non-potable water portable the drinkable water and uh, you, uh, 
purified water which we have discussed it is also available in the form of water for injection wfi sterile water and uh, bacteriosteric water and yeah so it's basically a purified water sterile water and bacteriosteric water so that's it and last you have to check some uh, parameters of waters for example it's ph conductivity acidity ammonia and these anions that are present in them and uh, bacterial counts and this all so yeah so i hope you guys understood the lecture and uh, please make sure to support and subscribe thank you